7.30 to time on 7 Night of the Zone. John Trotwine is with us live in studio. John, good to have you here. Thank you, sir. Nice to be here. Get, get real tight on that microphone so everybody can hear you for sure. And, uh, you know, uh, for you, who is an uh, ex-major leaguer, right? Correct. Played uh, minor leagues for how many years? Minor leagues for six and the big leagues for one year. One long cup of coffee. One, one big cup of coffee. Yeah. In uh, Boston, Boston, of all places, yep. right? On an 88 team that wins the pennant, right? Correct. Well, that's a Morgan's Miracle team. It was. Tom Bernanski makes a diving catch, right, and you yeah. guys win the pennant. That's right. And you were a middle reliever, is that right? Correct. Um, you end up in Georgia how many years after that? 90, 99, so 11 years later. So you're building a family, and <coughs> you have a son, um, Will Troutwine, who unfortunately um, has passed as of uh, about six months ago, or five uh, months ago or so. Less than that, October 15th, so coming up on four months. Well, so tell us uh, – what happened, and what are you dealing with uh, as a family? Well, it's it's uh, as you guys have been saying, it's the worst nightmare you could think of. So Will was the oldest of four kids, and uh, he turned 15 in August of 2010. Um, big, strong, happy, popular, um, successful young man, um, good athlete, good student. Basically, had had the world, uh, you know, the world in the palm of his hand. And on October 15th that morning, we found him uh, lifeless in, a, in his bedroom. So your uh, 15-year-old son, who uh, apparently has everything to live for, um, commits suicide, something you've been yeah. very honest about. Uh, <coughs> how, I mean, I, I don't even know where to begin in terms of how to deal with it, but w what about signs, what about some sense that, as you said, Will was obviously dealing with some demons yeah. and dealing with himself? Well, that's it's that's the question, Stake. We you know we didn't see any signs, and uh, his friends didn't see any signs. He was a very normal kid. He was going through the same ups and downs that you and I went through. Um, all I can tell you is the world is a much younger place, so the pressures that we felt at maybe 19 and 20, these kids are feeling at 13 and 14 and 15, and um, complete shock, complete shock. Such to such an extent that my wife and I. You know, that, that weekend we're saying, you know, did someone come in the house and murder him? That's how stunned we were, and that's how stunned the community was because it really wasn't one of those kids you would ever think would happen. I, I have four kids, and if somebody would have said which one would do something like that, Will would not have been the one. I wouldn't have said any of them, but definitely would not have said Will. You're, but you're also trying to figure out, and I was reading up, and <coughs> was it a moment? Was it a day? Uh, not that it matters at the end, but you do have to get to the bottom of it. What what was the weakness in the moment or that day? I guess we'll never really know. Yeah. That that's the hard part. You know, we just we just don't. You know, and and you can go crazy thinking about it. And a good friend of mine said to me, uh, you know, ten ninety trout. You know, ten percent of life is what happens, and ninety percent is what you what you do with it. And I'm spending that. I'm trying to live that right now. And. Well, it helps me to, to well, live a in the 90 side, yeah. As a tribute to your son, I know you, you've started the nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. Will to Live. Can you talk about that a little bit and what that means to you and, and hopefully for others out there? Yeah. Well, that was that basically um, began the, the weekend. He died on a Friday, and it was that weekend. Um, the CEO of my company and I were talking, and we just said we have to do something here to turn this into a, into a positive thing in some way, shape, or form because – um, everybody who knew Will was stunned by it, and, and what, we're tip what we're basically finding now is that this situation is, is very common and it's very scary. So we thought, you know, how are we going to get these kids this, you know, to keep this will to live? And then the light went on. There it is. There's the foundation. And um, what we kept hearing and kept seeing, we went to various counseling, we went to various um, uh, meetings and things like that. We saw all these professionals, the professional counselors, the teachers, all these adults talking with the kids and trying to work with the kids in the schools. And, and as, a, as an, an athlete most of my life, spending most of my life on teams, I kept thinking, what about the kids talking to the kids? And let's create something that would give this avenue where we spread teen suicide awareness by getting the kids involved and having them working together and building those life bonds so that they make that call to each other. It's easier for them to talk to themselves than to talk to the adults. Well, I, I also think in, if I understand the mission, absolutely there's a chance to raise money, to raise funds. There mm -hmm. are people and groups that can help. More importantly than the dollar is just communication. Oh, yeah, definitely. Amongst kids. Yes. Yeah. You know, this, this 5K run on Saturday, you know, we're going to raise some money, and that's great. But as far as I'm concerned, it's already a success just because it's been – 
organized, it's created, organized, and implemented by high school kids, those friends. And to me, that is already the, 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 the reason for doing this. And so I'd, much, I'd rather spend 10 bucks or, or, or raise 10 bucks and have a bunch of kids working together, building these life bonds, these teammate bonds. Will to Live is the foundation, and uh, John Troutwine is with us live in the studio. I, it's a really hard question to ask you because you don't have a lot of information in terms of how this happened or where your son was at. But is there anything we have all 90% dads listening to us or guys listening to us? Is there any little nugget you take away and say in terms of, hey, you, 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 grew, you do grow up a lot faster now than at any other point. What other things can you tell somebody listening that hears this about a normal 15-year-old kid and says, how the hell do I make sure that never happens to me? I think I, that's a great question. And, and by the way, I'm, I have three more kids, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn it myself. So all of this stuff I'm doing is not really just for Will. It's, it's also for me and, right. and my wife and my family and my own kids. So there is a personal part of this. And, and all I can tell you is, is the more you talk about it, the better the chances are of preventing something like this. So the concept of a family, the concept of the family dinners, the concept of actually asking the specific question to your kids is very, very important. Can I ask, um, obviously, you're here and you're, you're pushing on as well as you can. Your other children, though, how are they doing? They're doing fine. Um, um, you know, they, they had a, an, an interesting way of dealing with this. They're, they absolutely adored Will, and um, they all are doing it in a different way. I have two boys, Tommy and Michael, who are 13 and 11, and they're very much into sports. They have lots of friends, and they've surrounded themselves with the friends who have been truly amazing in their maturity. And uh, my little six-year-old just draws pictures every day saying how she misses Will, and it's just uh, it's, it's her way of expressing. But wow. they're, uh, I'm, I'm very Im impressed with you know, the resolve that they have, and they give me strength and helps get up in the morning. What's the, uh, give me a website or a place or somewhere, a phone number if folks want to get involved in the Will to Live Foundation. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's um, www.willtolive.org with dashes in between. And um, friends at, uh, friends at willtolive.org is the email. And, and uh, on from the website, you can get to the uh, various other, you know, probably the most important part on the website is contacts in need of help. You okay. know, the suicide hotlines and parents, what to do what to look for, things like that, where definitely, they can kind of educate. Definitely something worth parents having available as, a, as one on their favorite list to every so often be checking yeah. and remembering that stuff. Yeah. Before we go, uh, I if folks want to know who you are, there is a way to figure you out. You're on YouTube, are you not? Uh, personally, because is this true? You've given up the longest homer of all time to Mark McGuire? Which says a lot. Yeah. Yes, I um, I believe it was the longest. I don't know if it's been official. Where was it? Where did it happen? It was in Fenway. Yeah. It was my third outing. Yeah. And um, I had done well the first two outings, and here I am against the, the you know, against Oakland, the, the Bash Brothers. And uh, he hit a ball that basically the, the crowd had a hush. Um, the announcer was Sean McDonough, said something like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and the ball landed <laughs> over the screen above the green monster. Yeah. And I think, I think it landed on the mass turnpike. Right. Was it one of those deals where the outfielders just didn't even move? Never moved, <laughs> which I had. I talked well, to Jim Rice about that afterwards, but he could have. What'd you try to get by him? <laughs> just throw him a fastball right It was down. a 3-1 fastball right down the <laughs> middle, and, and the 2-1 fastball was right down the middle, and they called it a ball. Oh. But I was a rookie, so who was I to argue? So the next pitch landed on the turnpike, and, well. and uh, it was a bad moment at that point, but now it's kind of become a fun memory. It's, uh, I it's something that uh, <laughs> you'll always have, I guess. Hey, John, I've heard a lot about you and your family. Thanks so much for coming through Will to Live found, uh, Foundation. Good luck with uh, the efforts this weekend as well. Thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate it. All right, John. All right. Uh, live here. we got a lot of stuff to get to over the course of the next hour or so. Steve White, Jay Taylor.